Welcome to Build Day Live here at Cohesity. I'm Alistair Cook and I'm joined by Lynn Lucas. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Alistair. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> of course, Lynn is actually our host here at the location, even though I'm hosting her for this video. But so happy to have you for the first time, right? Yes. As, well, in this location for yes. Cohesity, I should yes. say. Yes. And uh, one of the things that's been a persistent theme and that, that I've written about and that Cohesity has been writing about is, is around lots of copies of data being created within an organization for various business reasons and that these are often separate copies and, and you've got a special term for this. We do, but it's, it's uh, so the term is mass data fragmentation. If I may, I would say that it's not just about the copies. I think many of us in this industry have heard about copies for quite some time, but beyond just copies, uh, there's also fragmentation in a couple of other dimensions. So maybe it'd be good for us to talk about that. Yeah, I think so. Are you talking about data that's gone sometimes beyond the boundaries of the organization and, and that needs to be protected as well, things like cloud hosted uh, software as a service? I, there, th absolutely, there is that. So as, as we have been talking to customers and understanding their challenges mm -hmm. with data, I think uh, you know, certainly we can think about backup and all the copies that that creates. However, it's one portion of a larger problem, which you've just touched on another one, is the location aspect. Um, copies being created in different locations, such as the public cloud or in a, in a SaaS mm -hmm. service. Uh, but then we also have uh, the challenge of, let's take backup again, which unfortunately has typically been more of an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that copy of your database is not something you've been able to use, say, in your test dev or in an analytics environment. So you also have copies um, that are now stacking up in another silo in test dev and analytics in particular because of the fact that you can't reuse what you're doing from a backup perspective. So those are the three areas that we would term that really create this mass data fragmentation yeah. challenge. And so it would include things like taking a copy of my production database into a, a reporting so from my online transaction processing database, making a reporting database copy as a, a separate activity. Typically, yeah. this is a different organization, a different part of the organization solving their own problems yes, by, um, by reuse of data. Absolutely, yes. And I think that you know, a while ago, people, I think, felt like, oh, well, we'll be able to solve some of these challenges with just a, a, what was called copy data management solution. But it's a much more pervasive problem. Mm -hmm. um, in some survey research that we've done, we've seen that um, organizations now find that the cloud has significantly exacerbated that problem because it's so easy. So easy to make more copies. And, and you're only yeah. paying this month's bill. Yes, and those bills, I interestingly enough, in speaking with some C-level uh, folks at very, you know, uh, various industries, those bills are coming in at the department level. And so right. in many cases, it's not necessarily visible at how much is being spent because yes. so many, much of this is done at a department level. So even the billing is, is coming in fragmented, let alone the actual holding of yes. the data. And, yes, and exactly. Then presumably there's islands of data that are only usable for one department that might actually be useful across multiple. Exactly, you're precisely right. And I think the business impact of this is just starting to be understood, but in some of the research that we've done, um, IT organizations have felt that they're probably wasting um, about 16 weeks on average per uh, organization of time in creating and managing and dealing with all those copies. So 16 weeks, that's four that's, months of the year. That's a lot of time to, yes. to, not, to, to be doing the necessary work before you can do the real work. I, exactly, and most organizations, I think, are not looking to um, you know, remove those folks, but hey, business is looking for more insights and value out of the data and the information systems that they have. But if folks are just moving and pushing data and reprovisioning systems or provisioning new systems, for things they already have, then mm. they're not getting to the business of the business. And that's a classic situation of IT being the department of no, we're too busy doing this other activity to, to get to the business valuable piece. Precisely, precisely. So, so some of the impact that we think um, Cohesity can have in this regard uh, is 
in our uh, view, this is about first making sure that you have one platform for your data to collapse those silos. And we're talking about this, what we've termed secondary data, backups, but also uh, some of the files, uh, test dev, analytics, so that you have a global view and a global management structure of all that data. And that can create enormous savings of itself um, due to our unique deduplication and compression technologies. Um, we've seen customers report up to 70% reduction just from the storage savings alone from bringing this all together with the technology that we apply. And we have a video with one of your customers who was talking about having had a uh, 70 terabyte legacy requirement and bringing that, I don't remember the exact number, but it was somewhere around uh, 10 or 15 terabytes actually required when they migrated onto the Cohesity platform. And we have another video where I talked with Rawlinson about that global scope of the data efficiency, and that's a, a really nice story to not have to rehydrate the data anywhere it remains on platform. That's right, yes. Now I think the other part is what we touched on, which is the people, right? Um, and let's face it, folks, I think, want to serve the business. And it's hard to be the department of no and not fun, right? Who mm -hmm. wants to be the, the department of no? So um, when I've talked to customers, we have uh, one customer, um, XO Communications, which is a subsidiary of a major uh, telecom, Verizon, here in the US. Um, and they were in that cycle of having uh, to basically look at adding full-time staff simply to manage the provisioning and uh, backup and all of the operations around that for their increasing business in the public sector here in the US. They were planning before Cohesity to add several full-time equivalent staff to do that. Um, which sounds a little crazy, right? You got increasing business, and yeah, okay, we expect increasing staff, but just to manage backups, right? And the storage around that. Um, and what they were able to do with Cohesity is now still actually invest in new staff, but that staff is productive in terms of doing other higher value requests for the business and not just managing operational procedures around backup or reprovisioning storage. So not doing that necessary lower level work, um, having that automated and driven by policy rather than by, by sweat. A exactly, and I think that's a, uh, a, there's an intangible piece of that, you know, in terms of business value uh, to the senior uh, team though on, hey, what are the other higher level business objectives that we need IT to be serving and how could they be focused on that? Um, instead of just the movement of mm -hmm. infrastructure uh, and data around our, our uh, organization. So that releasing of the human effort to, to do more, more higher value is mm -hmm. a significant part. Well, thank you very much, Lynn, for joining me for this video. And thank you for viewing this video. There will be plenty more great content from Build Day Live here at Cohesity here on the channel.